Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 3, Lesson 27, where we're going to do division problems using up to a three-digit dividend. We're going to do them in a couple of different ways. We're going to do them by using place value disks, and we're going to use the standard algorithm as well. So I'm going to only do one problem today because... All these problems are fairly similar, and I thought by doing the most difficult one in the problem set, or in the homework set, that would maybe provide you with the most amount of guidance, and if you, should, if you can watch me do the most difficult one, hopefully all the somewhat simpler ones that you have before that would be fairly easy for you, or at least easier than they would otherwise be. So let's take a look at problem number two, and I'm going to do number C, problem 2C, which is this large number here. We are going to divide 964 by four, and we're gonna do that with two different methods. The first method we're gonna use is we're gonna use our place value disks. So let's go ahead and draw out our place value disk and get 964 up there. So let's see, we've got ones, tens, and hundreds, and the number we're representing here is 964. So let's see, nine hundreds, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundreds. Six tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four ones, one, two, three, four. Now, when we do division in our place value disk model, we need to figure out exactly how many groups we're dividing 964 into. And I see here that we are dividing 964 by four, so we need to make four groups below. So let's do that. Let's see, this will make one, two, three, four groups below. We need to extend our lines just a little bit. Now we always start with our biggest units when we divide up place value disks. So let's go ahead and divide our hundreds into our four groups. Let's see, we have nine of them. So let's just start counting this out. Let's see, we can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's using up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of our hundreds. And we still have a ninth hundred that we can't evenly divide into our groups. So I think we are going to need to decompose that or unbundle it into tens. So let's see, that's going to make us 10 tens. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's put that straight one out there. Awesome. So I think we're done with our hundreds. We've taken eight of our hundreds up here, and we've distributed them into, divided them into our four groups, one, two, three, four, leaving two in each group. We've taken our ninth hundred and we've unbundled it and made more tens. Now that we had six tens before and we unbundled 10 more, so I think that gives us 16 tens to divide. And the good news here is that 16 tens across four groups is gonna be pretty straightforward, right? That's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 will use up all Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of our tens. All of our tens are used up. We don't have any more that we have to unbundle, and we can move on to our ones, where we have a very simple problem, right? We have four ones that need to be divided into four groups, and that's going to be real easy. One, two, three, four. One of the ones in each of the groups. So let's see, at the end of the day, when we look at each of our groups, what do we have in there? Well, let's see, I see I count two hundreds, two hundreds, that's my shorthand for that. I see four tens, and I see one, oops, one, one, or 241 in each of those groups. Now let's do the standard algorithm and see if we come up with the same answer. We had 964, and we are dividing that by 4. So the first thing we do is we see what number of hundreds times 4 can we fit in 900s. Well, we can definitely fit 400, so we can definitely do 1. But could we fit 2? Let's see, 200s times 4 would be 800s. Yep, that still fits. But if we tried to go up to 300s, that wouldn't work, because 300s times 4 would be 1,200. We don't have 1,200s. So let's go back to where we were. That's 200s times 4 means that we've divided out 800s. So 8 of our original 900s have been used up, leaving us just 100 left. Now we pull down our next unit, which is 10s. And now we have a new question, which is how many times, how many 10s can we multiply by 4 and still fit into 16? And let's see, we could skip count. So that 110 would be 40, or 4 10s. 2 tens times 4 would be 8 tens. 3 tens times 4 would be 12 tens. 4 tens times 4 would be 16 tens. Perfect. All right, so let's do 4 
tens. Four tens times four would be 16 tens. So we've used 16 of our 16 tens, leaving no tens remaining. And now we just have to pull down our last remaining units, which are ones, four ones. And now we ask that same question again. What number of ones up here can we multiply by four to get four ones? Well, that one's an easier one. So let's see, one one times four would be four ones. And so that would be four ones minus four ones is zero, meaning that we have a quotient of 241 and a remainder down here of zero. And is that what we got on our other side? Well, sure enough, we had 241 in each of our groups with no remaining units up here. The, this extra 100 had become tens. All the tens got used up. All the ones got used up. There was no remainder here. And so that is our answer. Whether we do it one way or the other, our quotient, oops, our quotient here is going to be 241 with a remainder of zero. So that's the most difficult problem in tonight's homework. So that's the last problem of the whole bunch. My hope is that if by doing this one together, we can get you moving along to solving the other ones that are a little simpler or a little less daunting or have a little few, uh, fewer, fewer dots involved in them, a little less complicated algorithm. So I hope you join me next time for Mr. Kong Has Problems. Thanks for joining me tonight. Bye-bye.